morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Right. My name is Shaul, Shaul Kuhlman. I'm posing a question that I'm sure is on everyone's mind today. Is your child ready for the future? That's a big one. I don't know if any of your parents know, but have you ever heard of Candy Crush? Candy Crush, a Facebook game? Right, have you ever bought anything on Facebook? Maybe, maybe not. Just for interest sakes, do any of you know how much Candy Crush earns daily? 850,000 US dollars every day. And have you ever heard of Clash of Clans? Clash of Clans has a daily revenue of 2.4 billion US dollars. Every day. The designer of Supercell, who founded Clash of Clans in heyday, is 19 years old and dropped out of school at the age of 15, retired at the age of 60. How nice is that? Right. Um, I know predictions in the future are difficult to make, but it's estimated that by 2049, a computer that will only cost you about $1,000 will have the computational capabilities of the entire human species. The entire human species. A fiber optics cable was recently tested by Alcatel that will run about 1 trillion bits per strand of fiber. That is about 100 billion phone calls every second. Insane. Right, so I'll ask again. Is your child ready for the future? Do you know what your child gets taught at school? Because at the moment, children in school are being prepared for jobs that don't exist yet, using technologies that haven't been invented yet to solve problems that, in our minds, aren't even problems yet. Um, just another interesting fact, in 2006, the top 10 in demand jobs did not exist in 1998. In 2010, the top 10 in demand jobs did not exist in 2006. And in 2015, which is this year, the top 10 in demand jobs did not exist in 2012. Uh, this is a funny one, but in China, a professional fart smeller is actually an occupation that will earn you about 50,000 Chinese dollars every month. So to the parents, are you ready to adapt and to teach your child to prepare themselves for the ever-expanding, daunting business world that lies ahead? Now before we continue, I think I should remind you that teachers are not nannies or babysitters. So honestly, to be blunt with you, I think parents should stop forcing the responsibility of educating their own children onto the government and just expect that the education system will take care of them, because they can't. The education is there to train your children, not to educate and prepare them for life. Now, I'm not saying school is bad or anything, um, but, and I'm not saying homeschooling is the answer to all your questions, because it might not be. Homeschooling is not for everyone, and I'm sure if you ask a lot of people here, I have a few friends as well that went back to school, and they're awesome people. So there's nothing wrong with school, we really also went back to school, not pointing fingers. Um, but for me, homeschooling was the answer. Um, just to give you a short background, over the course of about five years, I attended three public schools. Now, most people are under the illusion that people start homeschooling because you're a special needs child or you have learning disabilities, and sometimes that's true, but not always. Um, for me, I was always top of my class. Um, I excelled academically, um, but I talked a lot in class. I would always finish my work early and start chatting to my friends next to me. And because I was the teacher's favorite and because of my own insecurities, I was bullied a lot. And that for me was probably the worst experience of school. Um, I became extremely shy. Um, the only people to ever hear me speak were those closest to me, which would be my family and my brother. I didn't talk much other than that. Now, fortunately, my parents at the time realized that maybe school wasn't the best thing for me, so they put me out to, well, took me out of homeschooling. And as a family, we decided to take on the daunting task of home education. All right. Now, my mother started homeschooling my brother and me. Um, actually, unschooling. And this took some getting used to. Uh, we had our fair share of arguments and disagreements. And as any homeschooler would know, we wrote essays and... We wrote about everything. <laughs> Literally everything. The Olympic Games is probably the first project we did. Um, I must have been in a consolidation phase because I can't remember it anymore. <laughs> but, about when, uh, but just after we finished it, I could recite every single sport, what it was, how it worked, all that type of jazz. Um, so like I said, we started off our first year by unschooling. Um, and my parents exposed us to as many fields as possible. We did a few mentorships or, or internships with a few people um, to try and teach us different fields, IT, uh, web design, graphic design, all that type of stuff. 
um, so that my brother and I could get a good feel of where we wanted to go in life, where we were headed. Um, so this took a while to get used to, um, but after, un after the unschooling thing, my mom decided that we should start with the curriculum. <laughs> I'm sure many parents here will know that that doesn't always fly. <laughs> that does not always work. So then eventually we started with an eclectic curriculum. <laughs> Uh, which was kind of a mix and match of different curriculums. If you want to know more about that, you can chat to my mom. I have no clue what we learned there. Um, no, I'm not joking. So one morning in 2012, my mom had, um, she, was, she was chatting to one of her friends, and her and her friend had this brilliant idea. You know, we think we should make, we should, we should teach our children to plan their own days. We loved it, of course, because, like, <laughs> Oh, I'll play video games for like the first half an hour of my day and then I'll eat, sleep some more and that did not work either. So obviously I think all of you know that TV and games in my mom's eyes was extremely educational. But it will teach you something eventually, right? Eventually. Anyways, um, so after a few disagreements on this whole thing. We got used to it, and we learned something extremely valuable, time management. That's something I think a lot of adults I know still struggle with. Um, so we learned to get done what we needed to, but we could do it in our own way, which gave us a sense of individuality, um, and, and we sort of felt responsible for our own education. This sort of pushed my brother and I more as well. So after about three years of our homeschooling lives, my mother discovered the footprint syllabus. Again, my mum, she loves structure, and mum, I love you very much, but she's a control freak as well, excuse me. But, so, as soon as she found the Footprints curriculum, this was it, this was the answer. I would finish school with the Footprints curriculum, I would have everything I needed. It took about a month for my mum to realise that was not going to work. So, uh, other than the ton of reading, my brother and I had to do a lot more reading too. And I'm um, suddenly reading the back of the, I mean, the whole book wasn't enough anymore. My mom was extremely meticulous and we started to write book reports and all that type of stuff. Um, and we actually learned quite a bit about history. Then eventually, after about a year of the Footprints curriculum, uh, trying my mom trying to implement this curriculum on my brother, and I just went, ah, you can try, if you really want, we dare you. Um, I started with Cambridge. Um, and eventually, about a month of, after a month of that, I decided against doing my matric certificate. Um, this was about two years ago. Now, after being ridiculed quite a bit um, by a lot of my friends, I still have a lot of school friends. Um, it's a small town where we stay, so my dad always makes a joke. It's so small that if you don't know where you're going, you can always ask the, your neighbors or the people next to you. They, they should have a good idea of where you're headed. Um, so these few people, obviously my school friends, their parents, felt that I was wasting my youth. Um, so they told me, no, you can't. You have to do a matric certificate. And I was just like, well, why? Because for those of you that don't know me, I'm into the performing arts industry. Um, acting, drama, dancing, modeling, that's my thing. And for that, I honestly didn't see the need of getting a matric certificate. Um, so at one stage, we went down to Cape Town. Um, I checked out AFTA, the performing arts school, one of the best in South Africa. Um, and as we walked in and we started chatting to the receptionist there, I asked her, so what do I need to get into AFTA? And she said, no, a matric certificate. And I thought, Oh, well, I just decided against doing mine, but how else can I get in? No, there are bursaries. Okay, that's cool. And I started chatting to one of the teachers then straight away after that. And um, one of the first things the teacher told me was, when you get in here, the first thing we tell you is, everything you learned in school, you can forget it. It's not going to help you here. So then I thought, so you need a matric certificate. But they tell you you can forget it all. So I thought, hmm. Maybe after is the place for me. So then eventually I went to Pneumatics, and Pneumatics is the Christian Performing Arts Academy in Cape Town. And after chatting to the manager of campus for a brief period of time, probably an hour, an hour and a half, um, I was invited to go there next year. Yeah, well, it would have been this year, that was last year. And obviously my dad at the time felt, whoa, no, 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 no. I still have golden nuggets of wisdom that I need to impart in my, my son before he can become a man and before I can send him off into the world. So, um, we humored my dad. Um, I stayed at home. Now, this year I've been working as hard as I can at uh, my craft, which would be acting, performing, and all that type of stuff. Um, so, at the beginning of this year, I decided to ask a few people that were close to me to be my mentors or to lead me, to teach me. 
um, business and leadership skills, life skills as well. So under the guidance of a number of web developers and graphic designers, I was able to gain more knowledge in this field um, and experience as well. Um, since then, I've been able to design about 12 logos for local businesses in our area, um, and I manage about three websites. So I have developed a love for graphic design and web design in the process as well, one of my favorite hobbies at the time. Um, then I started attending the Evergreen Theatre. This was a while ago, about eight years ago. Um, and through the Evergreen Theatre, I was able to do my grade eight speech and communication drama certificate through Trinity College in London, and my professional communication certificate. Um, I also started teaching drama at a few local schools in Kenton. And as a group at one stage, we were asked to make masks for dance drama. I mean, this was super weird. Like, you know those dances that hippies do with the masks and the whole... Now for me, that was like, uh, I don't really, that's not really my style. But I made the mask anyways. I didn't do the dance in the end, one of my friends did. Um, but after being asked again to make another mask, um, and being told that my masks were pretty cool, I started a business, um, founded a business. It originally, it was called Masquerade Art Studio, and then renamed it recently to Coolman Art Studio. Some of my masks are over there, you can check them out. I couldn't bring all of them, I have about 45 to 50 at the moment in stock, and I've sold about 20 to 25 over the course of a year. So, um, other than that, um, I've been doing dancing, been training myself in six different styles of dance, namely ballet, hip-hop, Latin, contemporary worship, and modern. Uh, earlier this year, I also started with vocal tra training. That's new for me, especially. Um, now, because I wasn't spending my time learning on things I didn't need, like a certificate for me, I was able to increase my knowledge in the crafts that I wanted to. So I guess you can call all this grooming. Um, about a week ago, two weeks ago, my brother and I performed in Johannesburg at the International Talent Showcase, um, where Kim Myers, who's a scout for the New York Film Academy, was scouting different talents, so actors, dancers, models, and singers. And uh, my brother and I auditioned for acting. We got 60 seconds on stage, and if you went over time, there was this horrid voice that would call time, and you just had to get off stage. And we had about 60 seconds to showcase our dance as well. And we modeled for 20 seconds. Now, not all models are. <laughs> so, uh, there were a few though. Anyways, hey, just, just briefly. As a model, they teach a man to lead with his chest. They teach you to walk with your chest. I feel like a spastic chicken. But if, for the guys, if you ever stand and Mr. Price or Edgar's away of you by clothes, and the t-shirt sits funny, just, Lead with your chest, you'll look great. Anyways, um, so my brother and I were then scouted by Kim Myers to go and represent South Africa at the Arts Convention in Orlando, Florida next year. That's in America for those of you that don't know. Um, now, at the Arts Convention, this was founded about 25 years ago, Kim Myers organized with a whole bunch of different scouts and casts from huge companies such as Disney, which I'm sure all of you have heard of Disney, Pixar Studios, Nickelodeon, um, Tyler Perry Studios, Sony Pictures. Uh, for those of you who don't know who Icon Studios is, Icon Studios fund Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber and a whole bunch of other people. Not that I'm a Justin Bieber fan, just saying. Um, so this is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity. And for my brother and I, this is where we want to go. So just to look over what I've said, I have been accepted to performance arts school without a matric certificate. So those of you who are unsure if you want to do a matric certificate or not, you can chat to me. I have a whole bunch of info on, or opinions, should I rather say, of why I don't need a matric certificate. So you can chat to me afterwards. Uh, but for me, obviously it depends on the child, but for me, I didn't need it, and I didn't see the point of doing it. Now obviously, there are massive questions that homeschoolers get asked, such as, do they socialize? No, we live under rocks. We can't talk to people. Interact at own risk. Somebody should make a t-shirt, it's a t-shirt. Someone should get onto that. Interact at own risk for homeschooling. Um, so obviously socialization, um, like Marie mentioned, you learn to interact with everyone, from a one-year-old, a two-year-old, to a 40, a 50, a 60-year-old. You learn to communicate and express who you are, or your opinions, what you think, onto other people. Not by forcing it onto them, but by sharing, communicating. You learn to socialize with children that are still a brick and a stick high, and people that are 100 billion years older than you, and that were with Moses on the ark. So, um, I'd say socialization is not a problem. Sports, uh, that's a different one. My brother teaches cricket coaching. Where is he? He's probably outside with kids. The Lego. Uh, 
He teaches cricket to a few children um, in our area, uh, founded a cricket academy. Um, now, obviously, sports is different, but I mean, you can look at clubs and all that type of stuff. For the parents, I would advise that if you do not have the resources on educating your child, let's say if you were a rugby player at school as a dad, and the mum was the secretary of some massive corporation, and your child is into performing arts, obviously you're a little on the subject. So find people in your area that have knowledge and expertise, that can train your child, that can, that can lead them, that can show them the way. Um, so as far as being on track goes, um, a lot of people always ask you how do you how do you grade your child? I once heard a joke that said, "No, we flip a coin at the end of each month to see which grade you." Three. Ah, yes. Um, obviously, grades it depends um, on the child, but like Leonard also mentioned, his daughter used to say, "I'm grade four, five, six, and seven. And it kind of works like that. For a homeschooler, you can be extremely educated in a certain area and not so educated in another area, less educated in another area. But it depends on the child, obviously. And if your child wants to be in performing arts, you don't have to have a degree as a maths teacher or anything like that, obviously. So like I said, my name is Charles Coleman. I'm an ordinary homeschooler. I'm with a massive dream to change Hollywood and influence the performing arts industry in a positive, uplifting, and encouraging way to bring glory to God. Homeschooling made it possible for me to be who I am today. It enabled me to focus on what I wanted to do, and like my dad always says, dreams always come a size too big so that you can grow into them. And so maybe it's time the education system grows a little bit. I challenge each one of you that are sitting here today, all the homeschoolers and all the parents, to make a positive, revolutionary change in the area that you're in, or in your field of interest. Hashtag do hard things.